the words think small that I used in an early ad caught on. That would have characterized the time when everybody was thinking big, think small. And that was, of course, the virtue of the car, which we call the, the beetle, etc. Remarkable thing about advertising is that sometimes the flavor or the persona of the advertising lends credence or to the car or the object that you're selling itself. So it's an interchange. My goodness, there's a lot of ads we did. <coughs> My wife says, is that Pimmy Corvin? And I said, get up and give me some cold in, which we were advertising at the time. So that became an advertisement and a billboard and et cetera, et cetera. So there was an agency in the 70s called Pappert, Koenig and Lois. And, and uh, Fred Pappert, uh, who today runs uh, Theater Row and uh, the 42nd Street Development Corporation. Uh, and Fred is a, you know, a model citizen uh, and also a horseman. And, uh, and Julian, uh, who is today a model citizen and also a horseman, uh, and George Lois, who's still trying to uh, uh, gain reputation in the advertising business. But George uh, uh, was, was their partner. He was an art director. Fred was a, uh, an account executive, and Julian was a writer. Well, you know, there's many ways to have your identity stolen, one of which is somebody to get your social security number, and the other is somebody to assume you're dead and take credit for everything you've ever done in your life. And uh, this is happening to Julian, uh, in, you know, in the, uh, uh, in the writings of George Lois. Well, as I say, I first was aware of it. We were working together. He's still at the agency and the fellow ended up leaving with him. He's what we used to call a shit stirrer, my second wife, the shit stirrer. He, George had, we were on two floors, and George's office connected by a spiral staircase in the ante room. It's right above mine, for whatever symbolic value that had. And Ron came down the stairs, came in to me and said, George is in there with his Japanese magazine fellow, and he's claiming credit for the, what, the Harvey Probachera that he wrote it. So I called George down. And George said, I never said that, I would never say that. And then he went back upstairs and Ron reported to me, the shit star reported to me. George came up back up and said, I told him where to get off. So. Well, one of the great stories that Julian Koenig tells, uh, you know, he had a way of sort of cutting to the chase. And uh, they, they were presenting an ad to their Procter & Gamble client, I believe, um, a big conference room, 20, 30 people. And, and Julian uh, uh, was presenting the ad. Oh, it was a wonderful thing. And a spread in Life magazine, well, in those days, a spread in Life magazine was like a commercial on the Super Bowl. It was the, the, the sort of the, the, the apotheosis of advertising. I mean, if you got an ad, a spread, two pages in Life magazine, that, was, that means you wrote the ad of the century. And the client looks at him and says, well, gee, uh, uh, Julian, um, what would that ad look like as a page? And Julian took the ad, and he said it would look like this. In George's first book, he credits me with tearing the page in half. And then years later, in his very good book for anybody starting advertising that he did, he credits himself with tearing the page in half. So things grew and amplified over the years stories uh, like the uh, the life magazine spread story which he had he was in the room uh, but had nothing to do with um, and there's a lot of examples it's scurrilous and, and Groucho Marx my hero they think it's William Morris or whoever representing, they gave a big dinner in Groucho was, and uh, uh, meeting him for the first time. And with his mustache and cigar. And, and I always told him I looked like Groucho, so 
um, we posed for pictures together and I was around them both with a cigar and I painted them with the thing. Because I've had that picture somewhere. And then I present Groucho to my clients, to the head of, uh, of Dutch Masters. And I want Groucho to pull a rug out from under him and do Groucho things. And instead he says, I welcome this chance. Uh, I'm going to do my best. Uh, I hope, I mean, he's being obsequious. He's not Groucho at all. And that was total collapse of bravura for me. He was any slavey, you know, from making nice to the money. My favorite Groucho line. Um, he was watching this woman walking down the street and he said, that reminds me, I've got to get my clock fixed. If you follow a woman, yeah. the bottom is swinging. <laughs> <laughs>